Hey folks, it's DIY Guy123 here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to tear down and uh, not rebuild per se, but really clean up and uh, maintain, go through a maintenance procedure with these uh, rolling bridge jacks. This is a jack off a rotary 12,000 pound hoist. And um, the only thing I've done to it uh, off camera, by the way, it, it, I bought it and I don't think it's had any cleaning done or maintenance done in, in many, many years. There's, uh, there's a decade worth of sludge and junk built up. So what I've done off camera is uh, taking the accordion protector right off of here. It just pops off with plastic push pins on the top and the bottom. And I've also slid out the actual rollers um, right here. What you do to get that out is you, uh, you, you basically push, the, push this part, that's not here, but anyway, the rollers, push them in all the way and then that roll pin is visible in this hole. There's one here and there's one on this side. And you use a punch and punch the roll pin into the center workings of the jack. Well, if you do that, this part will come out. So I've taken that out. And then the, uh, the next thing to do is um, undo the bolts. There are two, uh, two bolts that held the reservoir on underneath the platform here. So those two bolts came out. Remove the set screw that holds the bottom of the hydraulic cylinder onto the uh, the shaft here Now my other video talks about how I extracted that stripped out set screw So if you want to search my videos on how to do that and feel free and uh, So what I'll do next now that this is out of the way and that set screws out of there I'll be able to take my air chisel or air hammer and pound the shaft out like this It's gonna come right out through the other side here so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take the air chisel and punch this shaft right here out there. In fact, I already tried doing that yesterday and it didn't work. So I'm going to take a torch and heat that area up. back and forth a couple times. Oftentimes shafts that have a set screw have a dimple in them and that one certainly does right there. What you want to do is have some kind of an overhead lifting mechanism. Box is just hanging here. It's not supposed to be doing that. Well, maybe like this, or like this. Now, this thing's up in the air, so that this is completely free, and this part is gonna slide back this way, and see these openings right here? These openings, there's one on both sides. There's a, a neoprene bushing on the end of this down in there. It's gonna slide and come up, and that's how I'm gonna get this thing out. I slid it all the way to the right, and you can see the bushing just starting to emerge there. It's twisted a little bit. I'll push the whole thing down, straighten that bushing up so it's parallel with the surface and it'll come right out of there. Same thing on the other side. I'm cleaning this whole thing off. I've really, I've scraped all the corrosion off of all the tracks and passageways and off all the cylinder. Like this gives you an idea what I'm dealing with here. This is like 20 years of grime and just gross. I don't know how people let their equipment get in this kind of shape. Yes, it still works if there's dirt on top of it. But man, I don't feel good when I'm using equipment that's this poorly maintained, so. Uh, anyway, so there's that. And if you look at the bottom tray, this is what the jack slides in and out of. Look at this. I actually found parts, like there's a, I found a mechanics chisel, so I'll use that. Could be a hamster in here, could be anything. Okay, so I have everything Pretty well degreased in my wash tub, and uh, I went over it with a wire wheel. I don't didn't bother with a sandblaster. This isn't that kind of a project. So I know when I paint over this rusty metal, it's not going to last another 20 years. Plus, I'm not going to be dripping salt and water on this every uh, 
every day. So I think it'll be fine. One thing I want to point out though is these bushings that slide in this, this track right here, they, uh, they're actually not worn too badly. Um, but what's fascinating is the metal is gouged out pretty deep. Pretty deep. I don't know how many, you know, how deep, but maybe a millimeter or two and on both sides. And that's because this track got dirty and this neoprene slide picked up some hard steel particles, maybe splatters of weld or bits of rock or who knows. And it just ground that back and forth. The rock embedded in the neoprene and just ground the metal away. Well, even if you put new neoprene slides in there, they're just gonna erode pretty quickly because of that. So what I'm gonna do is use JB Weld, mix that up, smooth in this area right there. And now for as long as I'm gonna own this, those slides will go back and forth just over the JB Weld. Yes, the JB Weld would wear faster than this, but it's probably not gonna wear as fast as that. And again, I'm only gonna put this up and down 10 times a year anyway, so it's gonna last a long time for me. So with JB Weld, you mix equal parts of the white and equal parts of the black. So you want to mix this up until it's a uniform color. You don't want any dark black spots or white spots. You want everything to be like a dark gray. Kind of got to work quick because it does start to harden on you. And even if I did a poor job smoothing this out, it's going to be better than what was there, that's for sure. I'm kind of surprised given how gouged that metal out was, it wasn't just destroying those neoprene slides. They must be pretty tough. So I've got that side smoothed out nicely and this side smoothed out good enoughly. Okay, so everything's all greased up. These are the, the wheels that uh, will be going into this track. So that's greased. All these safety locks, everything's greased there. The tracks where the neoprene slides go, all greased. And of course the neoprene slides fit onto this little button there, there, and inside the piston I didn't do, but I will be doing uh, in a minute. So all that's to be greased. And the next thing to do is to take these little guys now I've cleaned them up. I know they look sort of dirty and stained, but that's just staining. I can't help that. Um, but there is a way that these things go on. And if you forget, if you look at yours, if they're round in a, or if they're worn with a circular, circular kind of groove in them, that goes towards the, this part. And the part that's not worn, like, that does not have a circular groove worn in it, goes towards this part. Okay. Oh, and the other thing to, do, to remember before you put these in. Look at the, the travel marks that are ground in. The ground, the ones with the grooves in it go on the bottom. So that's where the force is. The ones without the deep grooves are probably on the top. Okay. Um, if there's any metal flakes that are embedded in this neoprene, you want to pick them out so that you're not continuing to erode that metal. All right, so I've raised this whole scissor mechanism up. The tall part of that, bu that uh, neoprene bushing was on the upside and this shorter part was on the downside. So in other words, the pin from this is closer to the bottom of the neoprene bushing than it was to the top. So you basically fit them in this little track and then hopefully this will slide like this. Yes, it will. Yes, it does just like that. <laughs> Okay, so we're lined up here. Cylinder with this scissor business here with the uh, little pillow block area there. And then this is the pin that goes through it. Now remember the set screw that's in the uh, center of the hydraulic ram there? It should go into this little divot in the pin. Well, how do you know where that is when the pin's going in? So I took a little grind mark. There's the divot and there's the top of the pin. So as I'm driving it in, I'll know, uh, you know, to try to keep that set screw facing this way. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to grease this heavily and then just pound that in there. Lots of grease. Wow, wait, lots of grease. Oh my goodness. Now 
And the edge that's ground is actually just perfectly aligned, so I'm kind of surprised, but that's the way it is. Now, now that that's in, it gets locked in place by the, the these uh, slides that go on for the wheels. So not going to do that just yet. I'm going to move to this end right here. This shaft doesn't matter which orientation it goes in. Okay, since we last talked, I've got these uh, these in place, okay? The wheels with the uh, little track. And uh, they stay in place by driving in a uh, roll pin. That guy's done. Now, these wheels will come, on out, come out in and out like that. And like that. So the only other thing I did off camera was I reinserted the bolts that hold the power pack onto the plate. There is lubrication that can take place underneath here. You can definitely see the bushing right here runs in this track. There's a little bit of dirt in there. And, uh, but it's, that area is always clean because typically gravel doesn't, and dirt and whatever, doesn't fly up underneath this track. It just flies down in this track. So the bottom of this is gonna require much more cleaning and maintenance and the top ever will. So I'm gonna just spray that with some lubricant and call it good. So look, that's how you take care of the full teardown and cleaning and maintenance of a rolling bridge jack. Hope this helped you out. If you like my videos, please subscribe.